Welcome to AD4 TV Radio News Update. My name is Adeyemi Tosin. In the news today, Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari, represented by the Chairman, Senate Committee on Defense, Senator Ali Uwamako, today unveiled Tertiary Education Trust Fund's sponsored yearly intervention project at Nigeria Defense Academy, Nigerian Air Force Institute of Technology, Kaduna Polytechnic, as well as Kaduna State University. Wamako reiterated that education forms an essential part of the president administration's agenda, so the federal government will continue to provide necessary support towards making educational institutions globally competitive for the economic and technological development of the country. The United States government, through the Secretary of State Antony Blinken, on Wednesday enforced visa limits on specific individuals in Nigeria for undermining the democratic process in a recent Nigerian election. Blinken said the U.S. is committed to supporting the advancing democracy in Nigeria and around the world as the visa limit is not directed at the Nigerian people or the government of Nigeria. Blinken further said the decision to impose visa limits shows the commitment of the United States States to support Nigerian desire to stop corruption and increase democracy and the rule of law. Meanwhile, United States Department of Justice publicized that Chinese engineer Ji Chang Quen was today sentenced to eight years jail term in the United States for spying in a case linked to Chinese efforts to steal aviation trade secrets. Ji was accused of supplying information to the Jiangsu Province Ministry of State Security about eight individuals for possible recruitment. Recall that in September 2022, Ji Chang Quen was condemned for acting as an agent of a foreign government without notifying the U.S. Attorney General, a charge used in spying cases and of making false statements to the U.S. Army. Sudan's President Salva Kiir on Wednesday taxed his aide Tut Gatluk to meet with South Sudanese reconciliation team and discuss the ongoing political process to bring back the civilian-led change in Sudan and their plans to review the pact negotiation by the Sudanese parties in Juba. The forces for freedom and changes the delegation applauded Salva Kiir for the great role he has been playing for the security, peace, stability and progress of the two peoples as they walk towards restoring peace in South Sudan and Juba. In another development, Scotland's Education Secretary Shelley Ann Somerville revealed her preparation to intervene to stop local councils cutting teacher numbers and also prevent the number of school hours being reduced. As several local authorities, including Scottish National Party, are considering education cuts to balance their budgets. Somerville said the move is expected to spark a major role between the Scottish government and councils over funding levels of education and settling Scotland's teachers' pay disputes. Tanzania opposition leader Tunduliso on Wednesday returned back to his country after embarking on a self-imposed exile in Belgium for six years. Lisu harbored in Belgium after surviving an assassination attempt in 2017 when he was shot 16 times. Lisu on Wednesday called for political change in the country, saying his return will pave way for democracy in Tanzania. Moving to sports. International Cricket Council on Wednesday named England captain Ben Stokes as men's test cricketer of the year and England all-rounder Nat Siva women's one-day international cricketer of the year. The ICC said Stokes defined the year of test cricket more than any other as he took over the test captaincy from Joe Roots in April 2022 and has won nine of his ten tests in charge. While Seavers' award came after the, she scored 1,346 runs and took 22 wickets from her 33 international matches in 2022. For more information, please visit our platforms showing on the screen right now. Many thanks for watching.